The President of the Legislative Council. Questions. The first question, Mr. Long Chi Chang. Mr. President, the divesting, when divesting certain retail and car parking facilities of public housing estates linked real estate investment trusts in 20, 2005, the Hong Kong Authority advised the government would not interfere with the operation of the trust manager. The Link Management Limited now renamed as Link Asset Management Limited on the ground that it was a private enterprise but undertook to adopt measures to regulate the continued provision of services to residents by the company. However, some residents of Tinyu Estate in Tin Shui Wai have complained to me that the Link recently proposed a plan to convert Tinyu Market into a shopping mall the conversion plan, in short, then uh, neglecting their needs to purchase fresh food products. In response to media inquiries, the link has indicated that while it plans to relocate the wet goods stores in Tinio Market, the dry goods parts will be retained. The link has further advised that it has been adhering to the relevant land leases in the preceding in proceeding with the matter, the residents have also queried that they are unable to find out whether the number of public market stores available in the district upon implementation of the conversion plan will be in compliance with the relevant guidelines under the Hong Kong Planning Standards and Guidelines, or HKPSG in short. In this connection, will the government inform this council, one, whether it knows the details of the conversion plan, if it does, of the details, whether the authorities have received applications for changes in land use and land lease conditions, as well as other applications that require vetting and approval by government departments, which are submitted by the link in respect of the conversion plan if they have the details, to whether it has assessed if the the conversion plan will result in a reduction of public market services provided for local residents, i.e. the link will not continue to provide the residents with the original services if it has assessed, and the outcome is in the affirmative of the means through which authorities can prevent the link from taking forward the plan, and three, Given that while the government amended in 2009 the number of wet market stalls set out in HKPSG to stipulate that in planning of new public markets, in addition to the original practice of using population size as a planning guideline for public markets, other relevant factors, including community needs, must also be taken into account. But members of the public have been unable to find out whether the supply of public markets is adequate, whether the government will conduct a fresh comprehensive planning for the supply of public markets, including those built and managed by the Food and Environmental Hygiene Department, HK, uh, HA, uh, Hong Kong Housing Society, the link and the private sector in the light of the population size and enhance the transparency of the planning work, if it will, of the details. If not, the reasons for that. The Secretary for Food and Health. Uh, Mr. President, according to the Ling Asset Management Limited, the Ling in short, uh, the conversion works now being pursued uh, would entail consolidation of stores in uh, Tinyo Plaza in Tinshui Wai. Uh, the 
Wet market stalls within the plaza will be moved to the adjacent Tinxing Market, currently under renovation. The two markets are within uh, seven, a seven minute to ten minutes walk from each other and connected by a footbridge and lift. There will be shops selling vegetables, meat and food items in the plaza after consolidation. The plaza will also be air conditioned. The Tinching Market will be reopened um, in two phases uh, by the end of 2015 and early 2016. The total floor area will be the sum of the existing Tinyo Market and Tinching Market before renovation. It will also be Air conditioned. At present in Tinchui Wai, apart from Tinyo Market, there are other markets managed by the Link and the Hong Kong Housing, Soci Housing Authority, as well as, as other commercial facilities operated by the private sector. In addition to the above mentioned Tinching Market in Tinching Court, the Link also operates markets in Tinchui Estate, Tin Chak Estate, and Chung Fu Plaza. The HKHJ operates Tin Yan Plaza, which also has a market. Commercial facilities operated by uh, uh, my answers to the uh, other parts of the question as follows. With respect to the vetting procedures, um, they are as follows. Tinyo Market is located in the first floor of Tinyo Plaza of Tinyo Estate in Wai. The site currently falls within an area zoned residential group A on the approved Tinyo Wai outlying zoning plan, planning number STSW12. According to those, P market is always permitted, whereas on the lowest three floors of a building, including basement or the purpose designed non residential portion of an existing building, eating place and shop and services are also always permitted use. In other words, no planning permission from the town planning board is required. Um, B. Same as other private properties, conversion works at Tinyo Market uh, are subject to the building's ordinance. The authorized person is required to make a submission to the building authority according to the BO. Since Tinyo Market is a divested property of the HKHA, the director of buildings as the building authority uh, has delegated his statutory power to the independent checking unit, or ICU in short, of the Office of the Permanent Secretary for Transfer and Housing to process submission in accordance with BO and circulate the applicant's submission to relevant departments such as the Planning Department, Lands Department, Fire Services Department, according to the established practice of the Buildings Department. Based on the requirements stipulated in the BO and the prevailing procedure of the BD, the ICU, in exercising authority delegated to it, approved in May 2015, the submission. C. In addition, the link must comply with the relevant lease conditions and covenants between the link and the Hong Kong Housing Authority. Under the lease conditions of Tinyo Estate, Tinyo White Town, lot number 38, the lot is restricted to non industrial, excluding go down, hotel, and petrol filling station purposes. The proposed conversion of the markets to other commercial uses, such as a shopping complex, does not breach the user clause stipulated in lease conditions. According to the building plan circulated to the Lands Department by the ICU with respect to the proposed conversion of Tin Yu Market into a shopping complex, conversion will not cause the total gross floor area of commercial facilities as specified in the lease to be exceeded. The covenants between the Housing Authority and the Link contain restrictive com covenants. Those covenants require the owners of the commercial and car parking facilities to continue to let out certain commercial units to non-profit making organizations nominated by the Education Bureau or the Social Welfare Department at concessionary rents for operating social welfare and educational facilities. As with other private owners, the link must comply with legislative regulations including the town planning ordinance and the buildings ordinance and must comply with the lease conditions and covenants with the HKHA. These ensure that changes in the management and control of the facilities diverted, diverted by the HKHA will not affect the continuation of uses as commercial, car parking, educational, social welfare and recreational facilities. Two, according to the HA, 
The government has explained to the Legislative Council on various previous occasions the background to and objectives of the divestment of retail and car parking facilities in 2005, as well as mechanisms in place to regulate the uses of relevant facilities linked to private enterprise, so long as the operations comply with legislation relevant these conditions in terms of covenants made between the link and HA and link the government and HA cannot and will not interfere into the day-to-day -day operation and commercial decision link including commercial works. Third, uh, our focus is on facilitating convenient access on the part of the public to retail outlets in their neighborhood for meeting their daily needs on food and other necess necessities. Um, there exists a variety of channels of public to purchase fresh food apart from public markets. Many members of public, when purchasing fresh food, and may choose to patronize markets, supermarkets, various types of retail outlets. Customer preference for different shopping venues in purchasing fresh food may evolve in tandem with changes in socioeconomic circumstances, lifestyle, purchasing power, and various other factors. Taking the population of the area as a sole yardstick in the planning of new markets is less than appropriate. The prevailing Hong Kong planning standards and guidelines with respect to the planning of markets stipulate the relevant factors to be taken into consideration in the population of the area, including demographic mix, community needs, the provision of public and private market facilities nearby, the need or the number of fresh provision retail outlets in the vicinity and the public sentiment towards the preservation of hawker areas. This approach is based on a more holistic consideration of a relevant effect of all relevant factors rather than just the size of the population. When preparing or reviewing town plans, the, town, the planning department will consult the rent bureaus and departments so as to ascertain whether there is a need to reserve land for public markets. Will, in the light of social development and actual situation, assess the need to review the planning guidelines for public markets as well as when appropriate. Providing a new market requires the use of valuable land and entailed long-term public financial commitment. Therefore, in considering whether the market should be built, we have to duly assess the need for the market and cost effectiveness in order to ensure that public resources are put to proper use. In fact, in the face of fierce competition in changing circumstances in individual communities, some public markets are facing relatively high vacancy rates and low consumer flows. The audit department had in previous report, uh, reports pointed out that given the high cost of constructing a new public market, the relevant principles should be strictly adhered to um, um, in considering uh, whether new public markets should be provided in individual districts which take into account all the relevant factors, including the above-mentioned planning standards and guidelines, the actual situation in individual districts and view stakeholders to ensure the public resources put to proper use. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Lang Chi Chang, Mr. President, the question I raised today uh, focuses uh, on the housing authority and it should be answered by the housing bureau or the THB. Um, Dr. Ko now answers the question. I respect him, but his answers uh, do not touch on the link. In fact, at our meeting in 2008, um, the 18th of December, uh, to ensure that the link will continue to provide retail and parking facilities to the residents. Uh, that's the uh, issue, and that's the core. Now, is that agreement uh, still valid? Uh, Dr. Ko only answers the question on public markets. Um, Mr. President, you need to decide whether the THB should answer my question. Please ask your supplementary question. As for the officials attending the meeting and answering questions, um, they are to be decided by the administration. Uh, Chairman, I hope uh, an arrangement can be made. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Ko, since you represent the executive, uh, though I'm not happy with that, I think the link ignores uh, the needs of the residents. In announcing the uh, cancellation of Tinyo Market, uh, they uh, raised a, uh, an infuriating uh, issue. They said that if you just uh, walk across the street, you uh, could go to Tinxing Court's Market uh, to do your marketing, to, to do your um, groceries. Now, there are about 8,000 or so elderly people living nearby. Every day, the elderly people will have to walk more than 10 minutes, and they will have to uh, hold a lot of uh, their 
uh, uh, gross, uh, the groceries um, with bare hands. So will you come and see if it is possible to go to Tianjin Market and buy, buy groceries? Now concerning the question raised by Mr. Leung, uh, was uh, in respect of the last part, but um, the question is also related to certain consideration in dealing with the issue. I represent the executive in dealing with members' questions, or in dealing with the members' question. Now the topic touches on public market policy. It also touches on the divesting of government property. Uh, to the link read and is now called uh, the link asset management. Now there are colleagues across um, the bureaus and departments who assisted uh, in understanding this issue. In divesting the uh, property or properties, um, uh, there were certain um, covenants signed. Um, the terms have been that were set out, and the obligations were also uh, set out in the covenants. I've mentioned that, and I'm not uh, repeating it here. Now it's all in the paper. With regard to these terms, they are rather general and of a higher level, as long as they operate at um, according to uh, commercial uses. Then uh, the specific details uh, will not be um, restricted. Say, for example, the conversion of uh, the uh, products of a wet, wet market into another commercial use with retail services. Uh, if it is a conversion of wet market into a shopping mall, there was there is no breach of the uh, terms. Therefore. And this may not be able to meet people's aspirations, and that is to uh, maintain the wet market. I uh, understand uh, this point. Mr. President, let me also uh, mention this. As a uh, business, the operator has to consider its profits as a listed company. It also has to uh, take care of, of the interests of the shareholders. But I fully agree that uh, businesses do have their corporate uh, responsibilities, corporate social responsibilities. It is a business operation um, um, in terms uh, um, it may enhance its efficiency and profits. But it also has to consider the needs of different stakeholders. I uh, fully appreciate uh, the um, demands of the residents in the district. I am responsible for public markets. I have heard such calls, and the grassroots want to have the wet markets um, preserved so that um, they can be able to um, buy their necessities and also groceries. Uh, their concern is not about the class of the market or shopping mall. Mr. Leung, what is your question? Uh, uh, members and officials should be treated equally. He is digressing. This is not this is not a uh, procedural matter. Not a point of order. Yes, I'm answering Mr. Leung's question. In fact. The question is, how, uh, by what approach can we understand the needs of the people? Now, the suggestion of Mr. Leung is one of the approaches. Um, we uh, um, in the Bureau have many ways to ascertain the needs of uh, the Southern District. Uh, Mr. Secretary, if you are carrying a, uh, elect any electronic item, please put it away. We have spent more than 18 minutes on this question. No other members uh, have raised any supplementary question. So I ask officials in replying to the question should be tried, uh, should try to be as brief as possible, as brief and precise as pro uh, possible. I'm unhappy that the Secretary for um, 
transplant housing is not here to answer the question. Now, Dr. Ko said that if there is no change in commercial use, that's okay. The conversion of a wet market into a shopping mall will lead to the increase in rents by several times. And when the shopping center is was sold to the um, link, uh, there was an agreement. The markets and shopping centers in the housing estates are to serve the residents within the housing estate. Has the housing authority conducted a study with the conversion of a shop a market into a shopping mall? How many stalls will be reduced, and whether the prices of the store of uh, the wet market of the products sold in the wet market and in the commercial uh, center? Uh, will be increased. Uh, Mr. Fong, what is your question? Can you answer my question? Is there any assessment? After the conversion of wet market into the shopping mall, uh, there will be an increase in rents and property value, and that will only facilitate the link in selling its um, places. Now, you have already answered your question. Sec uh, you have already asked your question. The Secretary, and I want to, I've already answered Mr. Fong's question. Uh, I, I tend to answer Mr. I want to answer Mr. Fong's question, uh, but um, I will. I have to answer his preamble. Uh, um, in fact, my answers are addressing the question. Now, would members remain quiet? I really can't, can't hold my uh, laughter. Now, the member in the preamble repeated time and again the um, background of the divestment. I respect the uh, President's um, direction, but I have to address members' uh, reference to the background there and then. In Tin Wai, apart from Tin Yu Market, there are Markets operated by the Link, the HA, and other private sector uh, and other private firms. I've already mentioned that the HA has assessed the demand for such facilities, and we uh, were also involved. Uh, my question has not been answered, Mr. President. My question is: Please repeat your question. After conversion into a shopping mall, has the uh, housing department? Considered the actual impact on the Kai Fongs uh, um, after the conversion. Now, when the properties were sold to the link, uh, they promised that there would be no decline in service provided by the uh, shopping centers and markets. In fact, I've already pointed out in my answer to Mr. Leung's questions uh, that it was right to say that there were covenants, uh, the terms in the covenants. And there were also lease conditions. Before uh, handling this uh, question, I did some uh, study on the details of these covenants and see whether the uh, terms in the covenants uh, could be so detailed that the link uh, would be barred from conducting the conversion. The answer is the negative. Therefore, in my reply to Mr. Leung's question, I have added other comments. In a covenant, um, it is a covenant. If it is a covenant, then we have to look at the terms and we have to seek legal advice. In fact, um, s uh, several uh, different bureaus work together to study the provisions, the um, outcome. Uh, may not be satisfactory to you because the terms of the covenants cannot prevent the link from doing what it is now doing. Because what it is doing is in line with the terms of the covenants. In fact, you are not going after this. Even if it, he fulf it fulfills his terms, it has changed his use, it has changed uh, his format, and uh, and also is um, um, and people's feeling about it, and therefore I have given my comments. I hope you understand that. Eight members are waiting in the line. Apart from the member who has asked the main question, uh, only one member has asked a supplementary supplementary question. But we have spent more than twenty-three minutes.
question to the Honorable Yip Kwok Him. Well, I don't think too many members will be able to ask questions since the reply from the admin is quite long. President, on the 26th of last month, the International Agency for Research on, Sen on Cancer under the WHO published an evaluation report on the carcinogenicity of the consumption of processed meat and red meat. Processed meat has been classified as carcinogenic to humans, i.e. group 1, and red meat has been classified as probably carcinogenic to humans, i.e. group 2A. The experts concerned have concluded that a daily consumption of 50 grams of processed meat products will increase the risk of colorectal cancer by 18% given that quite a number of people in Hong Kong love eating red meat, as well as processed meat products such as bacon, sausages and ham. WHO's research findings have undoubtedly aroused concerns. In this connection, will the government inform this council, one, as there are differences in the ingre ingredients of processed meat products from various places and the body constitution of people from different ethnic origins, and various types of cancers of different causes, whether the authorities have studied if WHO's aforesaid report is applicable to the situation in Hong Kong, if they have of the details, and the authorities' corresponding measures, if not the reasons for that. Two, given the WHO's aforesaid report has pointed out that red meat poses cancer risks on one hand, red meat contains the nutrients essential for maintaining the normal functioning of the body, in particular the brain, on the other, whether the authorities will issue guidelines on the quantity of red meat on healthy menus and carry out publicity and educational work in this respect, in order to ensure that the food supplied by institutions providing food to certain groups of people including the Correctional Services Department, hospitals, schools and residential homes, as well as restaurants, is in conformity with the principle of a balanced diet, and that members of the public will be able to make informed food choices so as to avoid overcorrecting, if they will, of the details, and see given that under some existing support schemes subsidized by the government, such as the short-term food assistance service projects for the poor. The food items distributed are mostly processed foods such as canned food, supplemented by a few fresh food coupons. Whether the authorities will require organizations operating such schemes to consider increasing the proportion of fresh food in the food items to be distributed so as to avoid increasing the cancer risks of the service targets if they will, of the details, if not, the reasons for that. Secretary for Food and Health. President, as the risk factors associated with many types of cancers are close related to lifestyles, the Department of Health has been actively promoting healthy lifestyles, such as avoiding tobacco and alcohol, having regular physical activities, maintaining a healthy body weight and waist circumference, eating more vegetables and fruits, reducing the consumption of red meat and processed meat, etc., as a major preventive strategy to reduce the burden caused by non communicable diseases such as cancers to the public and society. We believe the public also understands the fresh ingredients are healthier than processed meat. However, the evaluation results on the carcinogenicity of the consumption of processed meat and red meat published by the International Agency for Research on Cancer, or IARC, of the WHO on the 26th of October 2015 have attracted global attention. The evaluation of the IARC is mainly an epidemiological investigation to the association of cancer with the consumption of processed meat and red meat and the classification has been made with no recommendation on the safe intake levels of the food concerned. A working group of 22 experts from 10 countries convened by the IARC Monographs Program has considered more than 800 studies and investigated the association of more than 10 types of cancers with the consumption of red meat of processed meat in a number of countries where people have diverse diets. 
processed meat has been classified as carcinogenic to humans, Group 1, based on sufficient evidence that the consumption of processed meat causes colorectal, colorectal cancer in humans. Well, Red meat has been classified as probably carcinogenic to humans or group 2A based on limited evidence that the consumption of red meat causes cancer in humans and strong mechanistic evidence supporting a carcinogenic effect. The IARC announced the above results without setting any safe intake levels for processed meat or red meat. As the report published by IALC has aroused widespread attention and concerns, the WHO made a statement on the 29th of October that it had released a report in 2002 to advise people to have moderate consumption of preserved meat so as to avoid the risk of cancer or to reduce it. The report published by the IARC does confirm the above-mentioned advice of WHO. The report has not asked people to stop eating processed meat. Instead, it indicates that reducing the consumption of such products can reduce the risk of colorectal cancer. The WHO will continue to research into the role of processed meat and red meat within the context of a healthy diet. As the contents of the IARC's report and the concepts behind the analysis are very professional and technical, they are not easy to understand. I would like to take this opportunity to explain as follows. One, as there is scientific evidence showing that processed meat is carcinogenic to humans, it is thus classified as group one, same as tobacco and smoking. However, the carcinogenicity of consumption of processed meat cannot be compared to that of tobacco smoking. Smoking. Second, the IRC estimates that a daily consumption of 50 grams of processed meat will increase the risk of colorectal cancer by 18%. According to the most recent estimates by the Global Burden of Disease Project, an independent academic research organization, about 34,000 cancer deaths per year in the world are attributable to diets high in processed meat, while about 1 million cancer deaths per year are caused by tobacco smoking. Hence, although both processed meat and tobacco smoking are classified as group 1, the risk of cancer deaths caused by the two can be very different. 3. We agree with the WHO's statement and consider that it is not necessary to ask people to stop eating processed meat, but the public should be aware the frequent consumption of processed meat will increase the risk of colorectal cancer and the consumption of such products should be reduced. As mentioned above, the DH is committed to promoting healthy lifestyles as the major prevention strategy against cancer. Apart from promoting healthy lifestyles, the DH has specifically reminded the public that consumption of red meat and processed meat is associated with a high risk of colorectal cancer. For example, features articles are entitled Red Meat Consumption, the Good and the Bad to be Cancer Aware and Taking Care of Your Bowels, Colorectal Cancer Prevention and Screening are published by the Center for Healthy Health Protection to explain the benefits and risks of eating red meat and processed meat related to health tips as well as ways to prevent colorectal cancer. In addition, the DH and the Cancer Expert Working Group on Cancer Prevention Screening under the Screening Coordinating Committee jointly published a booklet entitled Prevention and Screening for Colorectal Cancer in 2013. The booklet sets out the risk factors for colorectal cancer, which include high consumption of red meat and processed meat, and recommends the public to reduce the consumption of such products. At the same time, the DH promotes the principles of healthy eating with the use of the food pyramid, which includes choosing food that is low in fat, salt, and sugar. Consumption of processed meat is not encouraged as their fat and salt contention is relatively high. As for students, the DH launched the Eat Smart at School.hk campaign in primary schools in the 2006-07 school year and published the nutritional guidelines on lunch for students for use in primary and secondary schools. The guidelines suggest that given five school days in a week, lunch suppliers should not serve items from the limited food group on more than two school days per week. Items from the limited food group include processed or preserved meat, such as bacon, ham, sausages, and luncheon meat. The nutritional guidelines for children aged 2 to 6 issued by the DH recommend pre-primary institutions to use fresh and healthy ingredients and avoid processed meat. Moreover, 
the DH has been actively promoting the importance of a balanced diet, choosing nutritious, natural ingredients, and avoid. Processed meat in health promotion activities for elderly persons, the carers and the meal service providers of elderly homes. Based on the health eating principles, the elderly health service of the DH has published guidelines on the design of menu for elderly homes, as well as leaflets on promotion of a low sodium diet, stressing that processed food generally have a high salt content and should be avoided. It also encourages selecting a wide variety of foods from different food groups and avoiding dietary bias, so as to avoid excessive consumption of red meat and processed meat. At the community level, the DH launched the It's Smart the Restaurant HK campaign 2008, recommending restaurants to prepare three less dishes with healthy ingredients and to use uh, less uh, processed meat. In the light of the report of the IARC and the statement of the WHO, the DH has disseminated the related health information to government bureaus and departments as partners, explaining to them and reminding them to pay attention to the report. In particular, government bureaus and departments are advised to reduce the use of processed meat when arranging and providing meals for staff and service targets. And uh, the departments also asked to help disseminate the related health information to their stakeholders. The SWT has launched short-term food assistance service projects over the territory. It aims to provide short-term food assistance to help individuals or to tie over pampering hardship and coping with daily food expenditure. During the initial stage, uh, the projects mainly provided dry rations like uh, canned food. Since October 2013, they've been enhanced to allow for more food choices through provision of food or health meal coupons to serve users for them to redeem food at designated food vendors, supermarkets, and meal canteens. The value of food or hot meal coupons now constitutes about 40% of the food distributed to service users. Further, the release of the classification of processed meat as carcinogenic to humans, Group 1, by the IARC on the 26th of October, the SW met with the service operators of uh, the uh, short-term food assistance service projects on the 20th of October to review the types of nutritional food items uh, to be distributed under projects, and the SW will continue to regularly relay liaise with the service operators on the delivery of other projects. In some, we encourage people to start building up healthy eating habits at a young age, or eat more vegetables and food, and uh, remember the principles of three lows, one high, and that is choose food that is low in fat, sugar and salt, and high in fiber. The DH will continue to review the latest research and recommendations of both the local and overseas health authorities, including WHO. It will also, in collaboration with other partners, promote healthy lifestyles as the major preventive strategy and make amendments to the relevant guidelines when necessary as to save public health. Thank you. Mr. Kohim, the Secretary uh, spent a lot of time to uh, answer my questions, and uh, he stressed that uh, while there's a report from WHO, there is no need to stop uh, eating uh, processed meat now. But uh, people are now more concerned about healthy diets, but we lack um, healthy diet or related researchers in Hong Kong. Now, for uh, bacon, ham, sausages, and lunch and meats, and hamburgers, they are uh, well liked by Hong Kong people, and particularly young people. They also like eating hot pots, and also uh, street-level snacks. Can you enhance research in these areas to provide more tips or information on uh, healthy eating to the public? Secretary, while I understand uh, Mr. Ip's question and also his worries, when it comes to uh, uh, whether we have any uh, researchers in healthy diets, we do have them, and quite a lot of them, in fact. From time to time, the DH conducts its own dietary studies to look at the uh, nutritional makeup of uh, general diet in Hong Kong and also uh, the 
we also have NGOs conducting uh, and also academic uh, institutions uh, making such uh, researches from time to time. And they also uh, release uh, their findings in a form of uh, press briefings, a press conference, or seminars to disseminate uh, such information. Nowadays, I believe people have uh, ample opportunities to uh, access um, information related to healthy eating. And they also know uh, what are the unhealthy foods. However, at the end of the day, we believe the most difficult part is notwithstanding this understanding, how can we really influence people's eating habits? The DH and other organizations are working very hard through various means of publicity, not just to disseminate information on healthy eating. We also devise different um, ways to influence people's habits. For instance, in my main reply, we said that in schools, we do not just disseminate the information. With issued guidelines, we cooperate with schools trying to influence uh, what our primary and secondary school children are eating in schools. Thank you. Dr. Hannah Wong, President. I were told uh, by the secretary that the uh, DHS got various guidelines for KGs, primary and secondary schools. But has the administration taken the initiative to check uh, to see whether those guidelines are being followed and whether they have achieved their desired effect? Does the secretary know what is happening in schools? Will uh, schools uh, be serving um, sausages and luncheon meat and egg uh, dishes uh, many days in a week? Secretary, I dare not say, I dare not uh, use the word check and um, audit, but uh, we have uh, cooperated with academic institutions and schools and organizations and we disseminate information on healthy eating and to a certain extent we are interfering we have interfering uh, measures to affect our habits and what we are eating and the DH also collects a lot of information to see how effective these measures are so uh, we are certainly not um, uh, short in this Mr. Wong Kwok Hong Thank you, President. Well, I've used uh, the number or the amount of lunch and meat distributed by uh, food banks uh, to uh, demonstrate um, how uh, filibustering has impacted uh, on operation of uh, the council. So the public are very concerned about the distribution of lunch and meat in food projects. And according to the main reply, since the a statement by WHO on the 26th of October, there was a review by the SWD with its service operators on the 28th of October. I really welcome that, but the reply did not mention the findings of the review. So can the Secretary tell us what's the uh, outcome of the review on the 28th of October, would the same amount of lunch and meat be distributed out as in the past, or would there be more choices for surface recipients? Because uh, they do not have a lot of choice. So, can the secretary tell us what are the findings of the review conducted by SWD? Secretary, I believe um, Mr. Wong. I uh, should have noticed that in addition to the information quoted by Mr. Wong just now, my main reply also mentioned a new measure under uh, such uh, projects. In addition to uh, handing out dry rations like uh, canned food by food banks, these projects are also providing food or hot meal coupons to allow service users to redeem food of their choice at supermarkets and uh, food vendors. They are free to choose uh, what food items to redeem. 
And then on the 28th of October, as I mentioned, SWD met with the service operators and other stakeholders. There was a communication forum, and I believe the message contained in WHO's statement has uh, been hammered home to the stakeholders and points to note therein. I believe SWD will continue to liaise with their service operators very closely and monitor the progress of work in this regard. I believe uh, through SWD, DH will continue to follow up the um, work in this area. But I hope members understand that in a project such as a uh, or food banks to ask food banks to hand out fresh ingredients uh, would be a bit complicated in its operation. This is different from uh, distributing uh, dry rations. So uh, the they are providing meal coupons so that service users can make their own choice so that they can have access to more uh, fresh ingredients in this way. Besides, uh, the uh, food provided by wood f food banks uh, is not the only source of food for these families. I'm afraid, uh, Mr. Wong Ko Heng, the Secretary has raised answer your question. Please uh, leave less than uh, one minute for Mr. Stephen Ho. Mr. Stephen Ho, thank you. Uh, the Secretary... I use uh, three points to illustrate uh, the um, WHO statement, and I quote here, number three, we agree with the WHO statement and consider that it is not necessary to ask the public to stop eating processed meat, but the public should be aware that frequent consumption of processed meat will increase the risk of colorectal cancer, blah, blah, blah. Earlier this year, a new committee was set up by the administration, and I said that... Uh, uh, we agree with the WHO statement because it is not necessary to ask people to stop eating uh, salt and uh, sugar, but uh, they should reduce the intake of it. I don't know uh, how uh, salt and sugar is classified, but for processed meat, uh, it is now put on par with that of tobacco making. So will a committee be set up on the consumption of uh, processed meat, or will you add to the terms of reference of the Committee on Reduction of Salt and Sugar in Food? If not, how are you going to proceed with your publicity? Secretary, first I must make it clear. As I said in my main reply, the IARC published a report. From a layman's point of view, I think um, the uh, the uh, findings are more relevant and uh, have high reference uh, values uh, for research organizations and health authorities. But for members of the public, uh, it's not really uh, very relevant or useful information for reference because uh, for members of the public, they would expect that the higher the ranking, the higher the risks. But this is not really the case. It is talk about uh, the the strength of evidence in carcinogenicity. So as I explained, while they are both in grade uh, 2A, well, um, although uh, the evidence is strong, but the risks are very different. So from a public uh, health authority's point of view, I think we have a lesson to learn here, how we communicate with the public is important. With this uh, grading, uh, people would think that it is a classification of risks when, in fact, it is not. So we will certainly learn the lesson from here. Although we have a high-profile committee on reduction of salt and sugar in food, but that doesn't mean that uh, we uh, have neglected other areas of work uh, for uh, 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 Fat and also uh, the carcinogenicity of processed meat. I think uh, we are equally concerned with other areas to work on. Them. We've spent uh, more than uh, 24 minutes on this. Number question number three. Thank you, Mr. President. The Chief Secretary for Administration 
said last month that the government would actively develop multimedia platforms and better utilize social media to extend its reach so as to enhance its communication with members of the public. After assuming office for more than three years, the chief executive of the city launched his Facebook page, FB page, for the first time in October this year and shared his experience in planting honey peaches and dragon fruits. On the other hand, according to the findings of the public opinion surveys conducted by various universities, the popularity ratings of the city have been persistent low at a level below the warning line. Such figures have also revealed that the younger and the more educated the respondents are, the stronger they are opposed to receive holding the post. In this connection, will the government inform this council? First, whether it has assessed if the launch of the aforesaid FB page is conducive to enhancing communication between the C and the public, as well as raising C's popularity and the levels of public support and trust in him, if it has all of the details, if not the reasons for that. Second, as I have learned that among the members of the current election committee for the selection of CE, Hong Kong members of the National Committee of the Chinese People's Political Consultative Conference and members of the Executive Council, Legislative Council and District Councils, as well as deputies of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region to the National People's Congress, not all of them have been invited to join the list of friends of the FB page. Where do the authorities have assessed if this approach will affect the effectiveness of the government's efforts in improving the relationship between the executive authorities and the legislature, uniting different sectors of the society and creating a Hong Kong camp, etc. If they have all the details, if not the reasons for that, and third, whether it has deployed appropriate resources to maintain and update the FB page. If it has, whether the resources so deployed include cease time for official business. If so, whether the authorities have assessed if the use of cease time for official business to maintain and update the FB page has affected the quality and efficiency of policy implementation by government as well as the CE's workload, if they have all the details, if not the reasons for that. Secretary for Home Affairs. Mr. President, the government all along attaches great importance to its communication with various sectors of the community and proper dissimulation of information about public services and policies for the public's reference. On dissimulation of information, the government in the past usually promulgated its policies and made announcements by holding press conferences, issuing press releases, broadcasting announcements of public interest on television and radio, arranging media interviews for officials at various levels, etc. As regards communication with the public, it has been the government's practice to get hold of public opinion through councils at different levels and various advisory bodies. Government officials would also go to districts and contact the people direct from time to time to gauge public sentiment. In recent years, with the use of internet and social media becoming more and more popular, additional platforms have been made available for communication between the government and the public. The government understands that it needs to update its means of communication with the public to tie in with the changes in the habits of reading news and getting information. Although the conventional practice that is disseminating information through mass media and gathering public opinions through councils at different levels and advisory bodies remains useful, the government needs to keep up with and make use of the latest trend of information exchange through electronic platforms. The government also recognizes that Young people are more inclined to express their views through social media and are expecting immediate dissimulation of government information. To adapt to the above mentioned changes, the government has stepped up its efforts in communication and publicity using new media. Government departments have generally set up websites and emails providing the public with direct online access to information on public service and government policies, as well as email addresses for the public to make suggestions and inquiries. Government departments and officials are also furthering 
are also further strengthening their communication with the public information exchange by web mobile apps, creation of FB accounts and YouTube channels, publication of blogs, etc. Noting the proliferation of social media and information exchange platforms as a result of rapid technological advancement, the government will continue to explore and enhance its communication and exchange with the public using social media and electronic platforms. Nevertheless, we shall act prudently in using the new media for communication with the public, striving to strike a balance between disseminating government information promptly and ensuring accuracy of the information to avoid misunderstanding by the public. We shall also explore step by step the most effective ways of using social media for further sharing of the work of shows and taking heed to public views. Meanwhile, for the purpose of diversification of channels for communication exchange, we should continue to disseminate information through mainstream media and communicate with the public direct through councils at various levels and advisory bodies to garner public sentiment. We welcome public views in this regard. Regarding parts one and two of the question, the chief executive, the CE, has all along been conveying information to the community through diverse channels, including attending events, visiting districts, delivering speeches and accepting media interviews, meeting the media before the executive council meeting every Tuesday, publishing articles, etc. Since online platforms are becoming more popular, the CE has also issued blogs from time to time to express its views. Recently, the CE has also tried using the Facebook a social media platform to share with the public his reflections on life and work. As it has been mentioned above, the government exploring the use of the new media and is doing so through learning by doing. As far as the Facebook account of the sea is concerned, we shall keep on consolidating the experience, exploring new platforms and improving on various arrangements to strengthen our contact with the public. The sea will also continue to communicate with the public through a variety of means without confining himself to any particular channel. Regarding part three of the question, same as the website of the sea's office, the sea's Facebook account is maintained and updated by the sea's office. And the related work is absorbed by existing resources. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Lam Tai Fai. Um, for the district council elections this year, many candidates are using FB accounts to disseminate information and publicize themselves so as to enhance their chance of getting elected. We all know that the CE actively strives for re-election, but then other possible and potential candidates are also uh, making preparations like uh, using the FBI accounts to publicize themselves and disseminate information. Now, Secretary, you answer the questions on behalf of the government. You were once a district council member, a electrical member, and you were also a senior member of a political party. Now you were the undersecretary, and now you are the secretary. Um, so you're most uh, well positioned to answer this question. So can you share your opinions with us if we use the Facebook account to assist in an election, including the C election and the district council elections? Uh, what uh, effects can you achieve? You are so richly experienced. Please share your ideas with us. Secretary, for the C election, probably uh, Mr. Lam has got more information than me. So in this field, I haven't got anything else to add. But as a general point, for a public figure, whether we are officials or lawmakers, I think making use of different channels to communicate with the public and exchange views with the public would be very important. Indeed, the SARG have seen that different uh, directors of bureaus and secretaries of departments and departments have been making use of Facebook accounts and direct exchanges or face-to-face -face meetings with the media to communicate. Recently, in relation to the policy address, the CEO would like to listen to the views of the public. We haven't confined ourselves to any particular channels. We will make use of diversified means to reach the public. My question was, since he was so experienced in electioneering, so I want to know whether the FB 
uh, can assist in the election, so the relationship between the two. Um, Secretary, I'm not going to add to my answer concerning elections. Mr. Reedy, Mr. President, going online has become part of the life of the people of Hong Kong. There are more and more netizens. So it is good to see that the Hong Kong government is moving with the times in forms of communication. Many people have said that the government hasn't done enough, hasn't done quick enough, and hasn't been innovative enough. Now, in the uh, replies given by the secretary, he's saying that our views are welcome. The public's views would be welcome. Now, I want to ask him to comment on the following. There will be more and more public consultation documents being issued. Now, if you want to move with the times, so are you going to pledge that you are going to have a dummy's guide uh, for each and every public consultation document, or you have got a interesting video clip so that whenever you visit the government's website, it can easily um, uh, found there and you can easily understand the content of a public consultation document. Secretary, I thank Mr. Lee for her suggestions. Probably she's saying that in the past we weren't quick enough and we weren't innovative enough and the amount wasn't adequate when it came to uh, government information. Yes, uh, failure to react swiftly. Um, I think uh, this has been a problem because we also aim at accuracy. It takes time to get information from among the departments. Uh, Mr. Relief referred to future consultation exercises. Of course, there are different ways to go about it. Well, um, consultation documents would be one of them. Uh, she was suggesting perhaps we could uh, diversify the approach so that the public and the officials can have a direct exchange of views. I will certainly refer this idea back to the policy bureaus for their consideration. But then, for different consultation documents, they would each have their own uh, characteristics. So your suggestion uh, may not be right across the board. So we'll learn from experience and we will get views from the public. But at the same time, I think we need to take into account um, the nature of the consultation exercise as well as the special characteristics before we decide on the arrangements. Dr. Kiki Kwok. Thank you, Mr. President. The C's approval ratings have been going lower and lower, and he has to rescue himself, and therefore it is understandable that he opened an FB account. But then if you aren't a friend, you can't write anything to him. At first I thought that Democrats and also people like me could not become friends with him. But in fact, uh, even uh, for the uh, Hong Kong members to the um, CPPCC uh, cannot become a friend. Deputies of the Hong Kong SAR cannot become uh, to the NPC cannot become a friend. He used to boast that he would arm with uh, with a pen and his stew to go around the public. Now we haven't got this as well. Now in the government, there are many people who are good at using the um, social media. Uh, his uh, FB account has many followers and he has got a blog as well. So. In fact, uh, we can ask the CE to talk to John Chang. Um, now, nobody can become a friend of the CE, so how can he seek the re-election? Dr. Kwok, now the question for the secretary is, how can a person become a friend of the CE on his uh, Facebook page? Mr. President, when it comes to the use of social media, new social media, Departments and bureaus are still on a learning curve. We would like to learn while we try it. For the CE's FB account, uh, we'll be exploring it, and we are going to learn from experience, and we'd like to consolidate our experience. The CD would continue to make use of different means to communicate with the public. He won't confine himself to a particular channel. My question was clear. How could a, per how could a person become a friend on his Facebook page? You may very well have said that none of the citizens of Hong Kong can one day become his friend. But you haven't answered my question. Well, using the Facebook approach, well, in fact, it can be used in different ways. I'm sure the CE will try different ways to handle his account 
Of course, for the suggestion made by Dr. Kwok, this will be referred and related to the CD. Mr. Charles Mock, I don't know why Dr. Kwok asked such a question. Uh, it will cause people to suspect that he very much want to become a friend of Siwa Leung. It isn't the first time that he has got a Facebook account. Uh, there was one in the 2012 CD election. Uh, he only uh, launched it launch it now, I think it makes people think that he is seeking re-election. For the FS, I think he opened his Facebook account a long time ago. Well, in fact, uh, well before the uh, historic uh, shaking of hands. So please try to draw a comparison. Now, for this particular account, uh, you have to be accepted as a friend by the CD before you can become his friend. As Mr. Lam Dai Fai has said, lawmakers and Hong Kong members of the CPPCC, deputies of the Hong Kong SLR to the MPC are not invited as friends. Not everyone in the pro-establishment camp uh, are in support of CE. So if um, they um, post something on his uh, Facebook and it accidentally somebody offends the CD, will they then be uh, prosecuted under Section 161 for dishonest use of the computer? Uh, well, uh, Mr. Charles Mock is a representative of the IT constituency. I'm sure he knows the answer to the question. Now, when you are engaged in the exchanges in the Facebook, um, well, it is an open and public uh, sort of channel. It is a two-way uh, in interaction. For the Crimes Ordinance of Hong Kong, it applies to the society in real life as well as the virtual uh, world. So does it mean that the friends, at least the friends, can say whatever they like? Secretary, nothing to add. Mr. Porcher, Mr. President, the CG would like to use a new uh, approach to try to step up communication. He has my approval. Even for Obama, the president of the USA, and the USA is a um, major power in technology. But then uh, he has only uh, opened his personal Facebook account recently, and um, the public cannot uh, become a friend of Obama. Um, so it is said that uh, you are learning while doing. Are you going to outwit, or, or you are you going to do better than uh, President Obama? And would you have uh, criteria as to who can be added as his friends? Well, um, Secretary, the member has already referred to the examples elsewhere. In fact, we have made reference to the practices of other politicians around the world. The common point is that we want to make more use of the new media to communicate and interact with the public. Now, we are at the uh, initial stage and um, different uh, policy um, secretaries uh, using different ways to talk to the public. Mr. Porche's uh, suggestion will be uh, considered by us for reference purpose. Mr. Lee Chek Yen, if Si Wai Leung would like to have more friends, he should learn from his daughter, Chai Yen. I think Chai Yen has got more friends. I thank um, Nam Dai Fei for raising this question. I try to visit uh, his Facebook. I think the Facebook on many occasions would reflect a person's uh, um, personality or his priorities. Well, I found that uh, he has mentioned three dogs. He mentions uh, flowers. He mentions a meeting with Nancy Pelosi, so colluding with foreign forces. But he hasn't mentioned a meeting with lawmakers. Unfortunately, I just met with him. Political parties have met with him, but the news hasn't been reported in his Facebook. So does it reflect this? That is, the uh, secretary said that the policy address would be important, um, public opinions would be treasured. So in his reply, he also referred to the policy address. Now, po political parties are meeting with the CD over the policy address, but not even a single word has been said about meeting with us for the policy address. So what do you want to communicate with us, CE? Uh, you won't 
talk about local policies. You will just give emphasis to the foreign forces. Uh, you will not uh, give weight to political parties and lawmakers. You will just look at the foreign forces and you will only talk about dogs and flowers. Secretary, I think Mr. Lee himself has said that he has met with the CG to talk about the policy address. It shows one point that is two-way communication is not confined to the Facebook. You can always have a face-to-face -face meeting. So there are different means and channels. We shouldn't restrict ourselves to any particular um, channels. Uh, meeting with the uh, CG or the uh, secretaries of departments. Sometimes we do have a uh, confidentiality agreement. So it is not always the case that everything will be divulged after the meeting. But if you care to visit the CE's Facebook, other than his uh, personal life, he has also talked about the policies. Say, for example, in the case of the uh, Qingma Bridge, um, there was a collision with the bridge, and then the citizens wondered whether we should have a second link. I remember that on the 28th of October, um, the CD was in Tunbun, and then he was uh, looking at the um, mega project that is having a tunnel between Tunbun and Chetlap Kok. And uh, he had some exchanges with the media, and he uploaded certain information. So we were able to get uh, feedback from the netizens, and they hoped that uh, there would be a second link. And such an idea was also shared, and then uh, we told uh, people that the, it was under construction. Question for Miss Alice Smart. Some members of the public have complained to me that staff members of financial intermediaries, intermediaries for short, trick them into remortgaging their properties in order to obtain loans to resolve their financial difficulties. Only after signing certain documents did the victims realize that the documents contained provisions requiring the signatory to pay exorbitant intermediary fees, regardless of whether they draw down the loans. It's learned that some victims have eventually sold their properties as they cannot stand the harassment and intimidation of the intermediaries. Um, since last year, I've received more than 140 complaints involving a total of as high as over $130 million, indicating that the situation is serious. Members of the finance in industry have pointed out that the problem of unscrupulous business practices of intermediaries is rather serious, and yet the existing legislation is outdated, resulting in a lack of regulation on intermediaries. In their views, the authorities should review the regulatory regime to uphold the reputation of the industry of Hong Kong. In this connection, will the government inform this council, one, whether the authorities will, by making reference to overseas experience, amend the money lenders' ordinance to step up the regulation, such as requiring them to regularly submit to the regulator reports on their financial positions and stipulating that the loan and intermediary service agreements must contain a calling off period um, clause. If they will of the details, if not the reasons for that. Two, in light of the fact that operators in the Money lending industry vary in standard. Whether the authorities will reform the existing system, including tightening the licensing conditions, for example, requiring applicants to meet the minimum re registered capital re requirements and have sound business and financial records, licensees to comply with the code of conduct, etc. Two, setting up a registration system for practitioners, and three, empowering the money lenders registry or a newly established body to perform various regulatory, function, regulatory functions, including the formulation and implementation of a code of practice, granting of licenses, investigation, and revocation of uh, licenses, if they will, of details, if not reasons for that. Three, whether the authorities will provide resources to social welfare organizations with experience to support them in providing disinterested financial management of advisory services so as to reduce the cases of members of the public falling into credit traps inadvertently, if they will, of details, if not reasons for that. Secretary, Financial Services, and the Treasury. Ms. Matt's question contains three parts. My reply to parts one and two is as follows. It 
Under the existing moneylenders ordinance, the ordinance for short, a moneylender license is granted by the licensing court. In applying for the grant or renewal of a moneylender's license, a company is required to provide information such as information relating to its directors and major shareholders, information of all bank accounts open for the operation of the business as a moneylender, documentary proof of the capability of the company and its directors in managing the business, as well as documentary proof of their financial situation, etc. The information is provided to the licensing court to facilitate its consideration of whether to grant the application. The ordinance also specifies factors that the licensing court shall consider in processing an application for the license. The factors include whether the applicant is a fit and proper person to carry on business as a money lender, and whether the grant of such license is contrary to the public interest. No license will be granted if the applicant fails to satisfy the court that he or she is a fit and proper person to carry on business as a money lender, and that the premises to which the application relates are suitable for the carrying on of the business, and that the grant of such a license is not contrary to the public interest. Moreover, for applications for the grant or renewal of a moneylender's license, the police may, in accordance with the ordinance, require the applicant to produce for inspection relevant books, records or documents, or to furnish other information. Where there is a reasonable suspicion that the moneylender has committed an offence, the moneylender's registry and the police may, with the authorization and writing of the registrar of moneylenders or a police officer above the rank of superintendent, enter any premises where the business of the money lender is being carried on to inspect documents and accounts. The police have the authority to seize the, uh, such information. Under the ordinance, the police and the registrar may object to a license or renewal application. The ordinance also provides for the power of the licensing court to revoke a license. A license may be revoked if the licensing court considers that the licensee has ceased to be a fit and proper person to carry on business as a money lender, or that the licensee has been in serious breach of any condition. The above illustrates that the existing legislation has empowered the relevant authorities to take into consideration a set of factors when considering um, license applications. Regarding the question of a minimum registered capital, it is a means of prudential supervision for ensuring the financial stability of licensees and applicants. However, unlike other financial institutions such as banks and insurance companies, money lenders do not accept and handle deposit and premium payments from the public, such as supervisory too, may not be applicable to money lenders. The existing ordinance has provisions that prohibit any financial intermediaries from, fraudulent, from, from fraudulently inducing members of the public to borrow money from a money lender. According to the ordinance, it is a criminal offence to fraudulently induce any person to borrow money from a money lender by any false, misleading or deceptive statement or by any dishonest concealment of material facts. Of offenders will be liable to a fine and to imprisonment. Regarding the issue of suspected illegal fee charging by financial intermediaries, the ordinance expressly prohibits a moneylender from colluding with any person to charge a fee from a borrower. Offenders will also be liable to a fine and to imprisonment. If the intermediary engages in a commercial practice prohibited by the trade descriptions ordinance, such as false trade descriptions or misleading omissions, it commits an offence and will also be liable to a fine and to imprisonment. If the acts of an intermediary involves criminal elements, the police may handle and follow up on the matter in accordance with existing legislation, such as the Crimes Ordinance. From 2014 to August 2015, the police conducted a number of special operations against malpractices of intermediaries and arrested 91 persons. In September 2015, the police mounted an operation codenamed Keys Growler to combat illicit activities of moneylenders and intermediaries and arrested more than 130 people. The information shows that the enforcement actions by the police against malpractices have achieved further results. The government will continue to vigorously tackle breaches of the relevant ordinances. 
We're liaising closely with the police on its enforcement experience. In the coming in the coming few months, we'll make further analysis of all recent enforcement actions taken by the police, so as to better identify the difficulties experienced by the police in enforcing the law. At the same time, we'll also make reference to submissions made by members and interested parties. Depending on the outcome of the analysis, we won't rule out reviewing relevant provisions of the ordinance with a view to ensuring more effective measures against malpractices of intermediaries. We can follow up and discuss the matters concerned at the panel of on um, financial affairs. As regards part three of the question, the Invested Education Centre, IEC, the Consumer Council, CC and the police have been reminding the public through different means uh, of the points to note when taking out loans. They have also taken measures to raise awareness of fraudulent practices through different channels and to remind the public to understand thoroughly terms and conditions concerning fees and charges in any loan agreements. Loan and debt management has all along been a focus of the IEC's key education efforts. Since June this year, uh, the Centre has launched a series of education activities on borrowing to draw the public's attention to the points to note and the risks involved. The Centre has also worked with social welfare organisations to promote debt management in the community. For instance, the Centre cooperated with Caritas Hong Kong in September and October this year in organising two seminars which covered debt management information including risk on money lending, calculation of interest rate, Loan Products and Personal Credit Report. The Centre published posters on pitfalls of money lending and property loans in October this year and posted them in the areas managed by the Housing Department, Public Rental Housing and Housing under the Home Ownership Scheme by phases through the Housing Authority. The Centre also continues to enhance public education on money lending through mass media and e-newsletters. Ms. Matt. Well, since I asked a question last time, I have received uh, close to 160 cases involving about um, $150 million. So you see the problem is getting more serious. The Secretary mentioned about uh, a police operation called Key Scroller. I thank the police for attaching importance uh, to this and their effective enforcement of the law. However, in the last uh, week or two from the complaints I've received, it seems that these companies have um, come back to life. Well, they might have um, been targeted in the operation. However, they changed their names and started operating again. There should be some uh, regulatory framework under the law so that they cannot operate anymore. You said in your answer that you do not rule out the, uh, the possibility of reviewing a, a legislative amendment, and this will be discussed in, on the panel. I know that is on the uh, list of uh, item to, items to be discussed, but I don't know when we actually have a discussion. I hope as soon as possible. In your reply, Secretary, you said in my mentioning of a stepping up regulatory regime, of money lenders, including uh, setting a minimum uh, capital requirement. And the Secretary, however, said that uh, that does not apply. Apart from the minimum registered capital, we have to enhance regulation, uh, including making sure that uh, they will have a, a good track record and they will have to abide by the code of practice. And on top of that, they will have uh, practitioners will have to abide by the code of practice. So apart from the minimum registered capital, the, the rest actually apply. Um, you can implement them to enhance regulation. Secretary, I can say that the Bureau attaches importance to this and we liaise closely with the police. And as I've said, we would like to learn from the experience of uh, the police enforcement actions, we would like to know what difficulties they have encountered and we would consider follow-up actions, including legislative amendments. We understand that uh, these unscrupulous characters will use uh, different means 
to um, perpetrate their their crimes, and we will also leave no stone unturned to tackle them. We will endeavor to combat these um, malpractices or illegal activities. And as to how we follow it up, say for example, when we consider legislative amendments, what factors we will take into account, I can tell you that uh, we will take a comprehensive view of the situation. We collect views uh, from um, relevant parties, from legislators. We will take them all into account when following it up. Uh, in the right time, we will put this on the um, agenda item in the panel. Mr. Dennis Kwok. Well, at least the secretary today undertakes to consider amending outdated provisions under the money lenders ordinance. And that's something that we've been talking about for a very long time. The provisions uh, under the ordinance are quite lax. There is uh, no power. Um, given to authorities to regulate the operations of intermediaries. I hope to hear from the Secretary that the reform of the ordinance uh, will be put on the agenda as soon as possible. And under the reform, it should include the setting up of an independent uh, body to regulate the operation of intermediaries. And on top of that, there is also money laundering. A lot of people said that uh, the funds of these intermediaries actually came from uh, money launders. And importance should be attached to, the, to it, and they should be part of the reform. Secretary. I hope members will understand that we attach a lot of importance on this issue. We are very concerned about this as well. We were li liaising with uh, the police. We are um, taking stock of our experience, and we're considering different possibilities of what we can do. At this point of time, I am unable to give you uh, an exact answer as to what will be included in the reform. We will look into it, and we're happy to hear your views. And uh, as soon as practicable, we will uh, give you uh, more information in the at the panel. Mr. Chen Kim Po. Well, the intermediaries have done a lot of harm to the industry, and I, I actually know about this. Well, previously, the government refuses to review the ordinance. And as the secretary said that um, he would uh, take into account the views expressed by relevant um, uh, bodies, and that is an improvement. I do hope that you will be able to give us a timetable, three months, six months, when you will have a preliminary um, um, findings of your investigation. At least give us a timetable, secretary. Yes, uh, we will, as soon as possible, give you more information. What about a timetable? Three months? Six? Can you give Can you give us um, some sp specific um, information? Well, not really, but uh, we welcome uh, communications from you and uh, as far as possible, and we will give you more information about uh, our stance at the panel. Mr. Albert Hall. In the past uh, two or three years, there are lots of uh, financial uh, companies or intermediaries conning, uh, uh, deceiving members of the public. We see the number of cases and the uh, amount involved climbing, climbing. However, the secretary has given us quite a laid-back answer. The public are very disappointed, and the victims are also furious. And so far, there is still no timetable setting out when they will introduce a legislative amendment and a reform. And the government said that between 2014 to August 2015, they have mounted a number of uh, operations and arrested a number of people. So now that 130 people have been arrested, how many of them have been uh, prosecuted? What about the number of convictions? How many of them have uh, their license revoked? You know that uh, revocation is useless because as uh, one person can hold uh, X number of uh, licenses. So after looking at the figures, 
Will, will can the police identify that the operation difficulties? Will you set up a dedicated a team to look into the modus operandi and mount targeted uh, actions uh, to combat the uh, activities? Mr. Ho has raised a dozen of questions in relation to uh, follow up uh, information and figures. Do you have any information? Well, I can say that uh, I know that you are very concerned about this, uh, just as we are, and we treat this very seriously. In relation to um, figures, the the cases are being dealt with, and I don't have the information with me. The bureau has been in close liaison with the police, starting from the first of August of this year. The police. has handed uh, the information of malpractices that uh, involved uh, uh, criminal elements. Uh, these cases have been um, referred to uh, the criminal investigation ordinance for further investigation. So enforcement efforts have, have been stepped up. And I would like you, know, th like you to know that uh, in we are trying to get information from the police of the difficulties they encounter in enforcement, prosecution, and investigation. And in relation to um, amendments, I can't tell you the time, but it will be as soon as possible. Well, I can't say that it will be in the first quarter, but we would we will aim at that. I asked a specific question whether there will be, uh, uh, say, a task force to look into it. And the secretary talked about a criminal investigation. Of course, we know that the, there is criminal element in it. But will you set up a special task, uh, a task force to look into it? There is a mechanism between us and the police uh, to get better understanding of the situation. Mr. Kwaiko, the police has spared no effort to target um, uh, intermediaries and financial companies that engage in malpractices. Of course, uh, prevention is better than cure, and we all agree that legislative amendment is indispensable. When we've looked into cases, uh, we realize that um, there, are, there is actually limited counseling of uh, debt management. For people who encounter difficulties with their debts because of insufficient information, they face no cho uh, they had no choices and they've fallen into these uh, traps. So I'd like to know when it comes to uh, bodies that offer um, debt management services, uh, well, well, would they be given more resources so that they can step up their uh, service provision? As I said, um, the investigate. The Investor Education Center will step up its um, effort, and there are some NGOs, and we are happy to communicate with them um, so that they will know what we can do to help them uh, to provide better service, uh, say, for example, in debt restructuring. I asked about resources and also publicity. Will the Bureau take the initiative to give them uh, the same? We are happy to follow up and talk to them to see how we can help them. Mr. Sin Chong Kai, just now, Secretary, you said that uh, you welcome communication. I wrote to you to talk about this, but you rejected me. So, so much for uh, communication. Well, you were in the ivory tower, and now you're in the, in the government, and you should be doing political work. I don't know if you've actually heard from the victims firsthand. If you have done so, then you will think very differently because they will be actual people, not figures. Well, now that with the key scroll operation, some people have been arrested by the police. So under the ordinance, um, is there any power to uh, immediately revoke license of the directors of the companies to stop their operation? You do need a trump card to deal with the situation. Because without sufficient power, you need legislative amendment. Under the ordinance, the money lenders ordinance, 
Is there any power to uh, for the police uh, to revoke their license immediately after people have been arrested? Well, when uh, there is application for license or renew applications, uh, the police will. No, I'm talking about uh, revoking the license before um, a renewal. There is a mechanism. If it's contrary to the public interest, the license can be revoked. However, what we see, the, the, the situation as it stands, that when it comes to malpractices of intermediaries, um, there are fraudulent issues and a number of other issues. We have to deal with the criminal elements in these cases, of course. And if it's in line with public interest, and if we have reasons, Mr. Sin, please don't in keep interrupting the secretary. We have stepped up uh, enforcement to combat um, these intermediaries. We're collecting um, uh, evidence to finish our work. We've spent more, close to 24 minutes on this question. Tam Yu Chung Yu. Question number five, Mr. Tam Yu Chung. Mr. President, on the night of the 23rd of last month, Capture Mun Bridge connecting Mawan and Qing Chao Tai Peninsula of Lantau Island was struck by a vessel, triggering the ship impact alarms of the bridge. As a result, all lanes of Capture Mun Bridge and Qing Ma Bridge were closed to facilitate inspection by engineering staff. During the closure period, no vehicle could enter or leave Lantau Island. And the train services of the MTR Airport Express and Tongchung Line were also suspended, as land transport to and from Lantau Island was paralyzed for nearly two hours. The airport and Lantau Island suddenly became isolated, and close to 10,000 travelers were stranded at various stations along the Airport Express. Some members of the public have criticized the Transport Department for failing to respond expeditiously after the occurrence of the incident and for disseminating information in a confusing manner. They're worried that if a similar incident happens again during the peak period of outbound travel, the impact on the public will even be greater. In this connection, will the government inform this council? One. Given that the Emergency Transport Coordination Center under the Transport Department is responsible for monitoring and handling traffic and public transport incidents tra 24 hours a day, whether the authorities have reviewed if the center disseminated accurate information relating to the aforesaid incident, including information on temporary traffic arrangements to members of the public promptly after the occurrence of the incident and how they will improve the arrangements for the provision of temporary relief transport services by public transport operators of the details of the center's information dissemination mechanism and why the mechanism failed to perform effectively in the aforesaid incident. And two, as the Tun Mun Chalap Corp link, or the link currently under construction, will be the second trunk road connecting the airport and Lantau Island with other areas of the authorities' measures to ensure that the link can be completed on schedule in 2018 and the factors which may affect the completion date. Secretary for Transport and Housing. Mr. President, my consolidated reply to the question raised by Mr. Tammy Chung is as follows. The Emergency Transport Coordination Center, ETCC, of the Transport Department monitors traffic condition 24 hours a day. Its main task is to liaise and coordinate among government departments, public transport operators, and relevant organizations on the handling of traffic incidents and to disseminate the latest traffic information to the public. On the night of the 23rd of October, when Capture Moon Bridge was struck by a vessel, the ETCC had not released the news of the closure of the bridge in the first instance. According to my understanding from the Transport Department, the ETCC had first liaised with all public transport operators and the Airport Authority Hong Kong, AA, in order to make remedial arrangements as soon as possible, such as adjusting services and relieving the crowding of passengers and tourists and suspending the airport bus service at the termini to avoid aggravating road congestion. 
After the incident, the TD reviews and agrees that the ETCC should have informed the public of the closure of the bridge and contingency transport arrangements earlier. Should similar incidents happen in the future, the ETCC will inform the public of the road closure and contact and coordinate with the pub- public transport operators and the AA at the same time. When making the announcement to the public, the TD should also let the public know that contingency plans have been activated by the government, including arranging emergency ferries to provide limited service and reminding the public to consider adjusting their journey and keep abreast of the latest information. To further improve the channel of inf- information dissemination, the TD is considering a mobile phone application for the dissemination of special traffic news so that the public can get hold of the latest situation directly and immediately. As regards emergency alternative transport services on the night of the incident, the TD had taken action in, a, in accordance with the established contingency plan. On the one hand, the TD requested that the Discovery Bay ferry operator to enhance the frequency of services between Central and Discovery Bay, which had carried a total of 4,500 passenger trips. At the same time, the TD requested a strengthening of the bus feeder service between Discovery Bay and Airport Tung Chung. On the other hand, based on the emergency ferry service agreement signed between the TD and the Hong Kong and Kowloon Motor Boats and Tugboats Association Limited MBTA. The TD requested the MBTA to have the first boat arrived within two hours to take passengers pursuant to the agreement. The MBTA later confirmed that they were able to provide at least four ferry departures of emergency ferry services between Chinwan West Pier and Tongshu Development Pier at 10 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. with a total carrying capacity of around 700 passengers. However, Since the Lantau Link had reopened at about 9.40 p.m., the planned emergency ferry services was not needed. The ETCC had therefore not informed the public of the arrangement. On that night, the ETCC informed the public of the enhanced frequency of Discovery Bay ferry services and the feeder buses only when it had ensured that they were ready. In the same vein, the ETCC also released information to the public only after it had confirmed the details of the service provided by the MBTA. This is to avoid the public receiving incomplete information when the whole set of emergency service was not ready yet. Yet, For example, the public would not be informed of the service and pair location of emergency ferries, but not the departure time and frequency of the service or the availability of emergency service, but not how to contact uh, or how to connect to various locations on the Lantau Island. In hindsight, early dissemination of information and continuous updating would be a more desirable arrangement as a whole for the public who were already quite anxious to comprehensively review the contingency plans in response to the incident and to consider how to prevent similar incidents from happening again in the future, I chaired an interdepartmental meeting on the 29th of October. The meeting was uh, has initially identified four areas for follow-up. First, contingency. We'll adjust the alarm system so that key departments and organizations, including the Marine Department, TD, Highways Department, AA, and MTRCL, will be notified concurrently and are aware that when the bridge alarm is triggered, full closure of the bridge would be required for emergency inspection. Second, communication. To enable the public to learn about emergency incidents and relevant contingency arrangements more promptly and comprehensively, the TD and AA will develop a one-stop platform for information dissemination as soon as possible. Third, strengthening control to minimize risks of similar hit impact on the bridge. At present, the Lantau Link and the Airport Express is the only land link connecting Lantau and other parts of Hong Kong. In the case of full closure of land links, the relevant contingency measures have their limitations. For instance, the capacity and speed of sea ferries cannot be compared with that of land transport. Therefore, it is imperative that we prevent similar incidents from happening again. In the light of this incident, the MD will seek to secure resources to strengthen marine patrols around the height-restricted area of the bridge. Lastly, enhancing external connectivity between Lantau and the airport island. Upon commissioning of the uh, Tun Mun Chalapok Ling, see the attached map, which is now being constructed, another route will be available to connect Lantau, including the airport, with urban areas. The project spans nine kilometers. The completion time of the southern connection will tie in with that of the Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge main bridge, while the northern connection is targeted for completion in 2018. As the project is massive and complex, involving subsea tunnel boring works, 
Various challenges and risks will inevitably, inevitably be encountered. The highways department will closely monitor the progress of the project and will endeavor to overcome technical difficulties. Mr. Tammy Chong, Mr. President. On the 29th of October, the Secretary chaired an interdepartmental meeting, and at that meeting, several matters were discussed. For example, after the alarm system of the bridge had been triggered, I understand that uh, a crane truck was um, some uh, carrying several technical staff uh, to inspect the bridge with a torch. Uh, I wonder if new technology is available so that we don't need to wait so long. Are there any more expeditious means to inspect the bridge to uh, look at the hit impact? And you also mentioned in your reply that the Marine Department will seek to secure resources to strengthen marine patrols. Now, there are suggestions, uh, for example, uh, to install devices around the bridge, and if the uh, height exceeds the, restrict, uh, the limit, uh, the alarm would uh, go off. I wonder if. Uh, the, such technologies would be a, would be deployed to help resolve the problem, and also the airport island is uh, closed. Uh, it during uh, contingent um, emergencies uh, will the link uh, will it be opened up? In fact, you mentioned three matters which were discussed at the meeting held on the 29th of October. Now the red alert. Uh, triggered uh, on the 23rd of October showed that um, the bridge was struck and uh, optic fiber cables were damaged. And as a result, the responsible department, the highways department, would need to uh, look carefully into this matter. Otherwise, it would pose a risk to safety, including ra uh, railway safety. So, uh, drawing on this experience, uh, we will uh, strive to look for more expeditious means to uh, carry out inspection. But last time, uh, during the incident, uh, the the bridge was inspected in a careful manner with with the use of a crane. And I mentioned in the main reply that the Marine Department will seek to secure resources to strengthen marine patrols. In fact, drawing on the experience, the Marine Department has already deployed additional resources to strengthen marine patrols. There are three marine pa vessels um, undertaking patrol duties now. As to whether sensors can be installed along the waterways to um, detect the height of vessels, a consultancy um, has already been engaged, in fact, which uh, targets uh, ocean-going vessels and larger vessels and see whether a, an alarm system can be set up. And uh, we will await the consultancy report and draw on the experience of uh, Cap Shui Moon Bridge. Mr. Lan Kuo Hong, um, uh, Mr. President, uh, we don't have a quorum.
Secretary, please continue. Mr. President, may I continue? Just now, I mentioned that the Marine Department has engaged a consultant to study uh, into the issue of how an alert system can be installed along the waterways in, in a, along Ching Ma Bridge so that it would be more safe for vessels to uh, travel to and from Ching Ma Bridge and uh, in the northern north waterways. Such a device would be installed and it would be an opportunity for the consultant to uh, consider whether such an alarm system can be installed for Kap Shui Mun Bridge waterways. However, it would be more difficult because of height restrictions in the northbound of Kap Shui Mun Bridge. I mean, because of the short distance being the 450 meters, uh, vessels would be able to travel to the, uh, underneath the bridge in just half a minute, and it would be difficult to um, put the uh, vessel to a complete stop. Uh, lastly, in relation to Sky, the uh, Sky Pier, at present it is within the restricted zone in the airport, uh, in the Hong Kong International Airport, and it is the um, Pier offering a transfer service for passengers uh, coming to Hong Kong Airport to uh, to uh, uh, um, Pearl River Delta region. And during emergency situations, we can uh, neutralize certain part of the uh, restricted zones to allow passengers to come into the airport from the urban areas. Mr. Yu Si Wing. The incident uh, shows the uh, lack of um, uh, the government's ability to deal with uh, emergency situations. I wonder if the administration has looked into this. For example, the number of passengers traveling from urban um, districts to the airport per hour during different periods of time and the resources available in the public tra transport uh, sector for emergency situations. And in the event of uh, a similar incident happening again, whether such measures would be able to cope with the um, um, the volume of passengers. We don't have the breakdown of these figures. I'll need to um, go back and check. However, with such a high volume of pa of passengers, in the event of a closure of the bridge, if the closure period is long, definitely it will affect. Uh, the airport and uh, the flights, and we have a contingency plan. In relation to land transport between urban districts and land tower, in the event that the land link is closed, we have a contingency arrangement uh, offering a sea route. However, as I said in the main reply, in the capacity and speed of um, sea transport can not compare with the land transport. So more importantly, we should prevent such an incident from happening again. So as I said just now, we will work on uh, strengthening control and also to uh, make sure that the second link to Lentau and Airport Island could be completed as soon as possible, and that is the Tumun Chalapkot link. Mr. Frankie Yik. Well, in a follow up question um, put by Mr. Tam Yu Chong, Secretary, you already replied to part of his question. I understand that the Marine Department has uh, launched a pre preliminary study on the uh, height uh, censoring uh, alert system. For ocean going vessels, they're getting larger and larger. And there is a question on whether they can go underneath the bridges. I understand that you are talking to the relevant departments. I hope that you could do that as soon as possible because this will have to uh, they will have an impact on the ocean going vessels' decisions whether to come to Hong Kong or not. And I hope that this will be done as soon as possible, Secretary. Yes, we attach importance to this as well. And as Mr. Yik said. Uh, we want to make sure that the OGVs can uh, travel safely beneath bridges in Hong Kong. We hope that through the consultancy study uh, commissioned by the Marine Department, 
some uh, sensing censoring um, system can be installed to ensure safety. Mr. Albert Chen, well, about uh, bridges being struck by vessels in the 90s, the uh, bridge in Chengyi was also struck. Now, uh, there was a suggestion that the government should change the waterways for vessels, in particular for uh, OGVs and vessels coming in from southern China Sea. They actually do not need to go through the Ramblers Channel uh, to capture Moon Bridge and Qingma Bridge. They could actually take the other route to go directly to Qingyi uh, and the uh, vicinity. So would the administration consider this? Because this will help um, in the sense of a conservation as well, because Chinese white dolphins would not be disturbed uh, if um, vessels are diverted from using the south uh, southern route, and the uh, nuisance to residents can also be minimized. So, would the administration consider uh, using the alternative route rather than the southern route? Sea transport or sea traffic is or marine traffic is uh, quite heavy, and uh, in a sense, chance concern in terms of um, better marine traffic ma management. And the Marine Department will look into that. On the night of the 23rd of October, the barge was towed by a tugboat when it traveled underneath Cap Sherman Bridge. And this, in fact, should not have happened under our management system because uh, the coxswains are aware of the height restriction of the bridge being 41 meters. And if the vessel exceeds that height, the, the vessel should use Qingma Bridge instead. Mrs. Ellis Mack. Mr. President, of course, we can't um, foresee accidents. So normally, the vessel should not go underneath that bridge. But in fact, it did, and uh, there was a collision. So I think the members of the public are more concerned about this. In the event of a similar incident arising, they'd like to know the responsive measures. Well, the sub, um, uh, Secretary, you mentioned that uh, an interdepartmental meeting has been held with uh, contingency measures being drawn up. but. We would like to know the specific details. When will vessels be deployed to take passengers? Or when will a, a timetable be available and traffic arrangements be made? Do you have indicators to reassure members of the public? Secretary, in my main reply, we hope that uh, – but of course, we, uh, we uh, would try, uh, avoid – such incidents from happening again, but in the event of a similar incident arriving, arising, then we will inform the public. I mean, at the same time, the transport department will liaise with the MTBA and the relevant organizations. Uh, at, on the other hand, the members of the public would be informed of the contingency plans. As for the specific arrangements and emergency ferry services uh, arranged by the MT MBTA, well, of course there will be a time gap because uh, they will not, uh, they will only deploy um, vessels in service for emergency purposes. They don't have vessels waiting for uh, emergency situations. So there is an agreement on uh, when uh, the first departure of uh, emergency ferry service would be available, and we'll see whether further adjustments could be made. But in the event of um, the land link being disconnected, any marine traffic arrangements will not be able to have cope with the um, normal um, needs of a land transport. Mr. Michael Tian. Mr. President, I'd like to follow up on three points. Just now, the Secretary mentioned that uh, uh, it's just two minutes for a vessel to travel um, from the uh, uh, area to uh, the bridge. And in fact, the barge was, tuck, uh, was towed by a tugboat, and tugboat travel very slowly. The question, first of all, was why, well, Mr. Michael Tin, I think we're close to the end of this, uh, uh, the time allowed for this question. So please just ask one question for our secretary to answer. Well, 
uh, very simply, the Tumun Chat Labcock link will be commissioned in three years' time. And when a similar accident happened again, all the traffic will be diverted to Tumun, causing another serious traffic congestion because now the capacity has almost uh, been reached. Now you're creating another, we're suggesting another uh, land link from uh, the urban district to uh, Sunny Bay to, and then uh, via Sunny Bay to um, the airport island. Do you have a timetable for this proposal? Secretary. Well, of course, at the moment, we only have one land link to the airport island. That is a land town link. And the Tunmun Chek Lap Kork link, once commissioned, will provide uh, the second land link. But of course, we will not be uh, complacent. Uh, we want to prevent any uh, similar accident that happened on the 23rd of October. And we are talking also talking about other development plans, such as uh, reclamation in the, uh, in the midwaters um, of Lantau and uh, also in northern Lantau metropolis. And if these uh, development plans are put, um, uh, proceeded with, we also need to consider uh, comprehensively the uh, transport uh, arrangements. Uh, he hasn't answered my question. Mr. Tian, please don't put the microphone too close to your m lips. I'm sorry, time is almost up. Please be very brief. Well, Secretary said that this proposal may be considered, but my question is this. At, uh, in the long run, there is only one link. Uh, it is uh, far from sufficient. Whether or not there is uh, this uh, Kao Yi Chao um, link available, you need to consider the other railway line anyway. So, uh, Chair Secretary, any timetable for that? My question remains the same. If we're to consider another railway line to Landport, we, uh, Lantau, we need to consider um, other development plans for Lantau. Last question seeking or reply, Mr. Wong Ting Kong. Thank you, President. Some people have relayed to me the radical forces have recently emerged in Hong Kong, disseminating views, advocating the independence of Hong Kong, and instigating anti parallel trading protests. Such views and actions have torn Hong Kong's community apart, deepened the conflicts between the people on the mainland and in Hong Kong, and caused the central authorities to worry about Hong Kong's future. They also think that although it has been 25 years since the promulgation of the Basic Law, the government's efforts in promoting the concept of one country, two systems of the Basic Law have so far been overemphasizing the rights of Hong Kong people under the two systems while neglecting their obligations under the one country. In this connection, will the government inform this council, one, whether it has reviewed the effectiveness of its past efforts in promoting the basic law, if it has, of the details, if not, the reasons for that. Whether it has studied the causes for the recent emergence of radical forces in Hong Kong and the impacts of such forces on the youth. Two, as there are views that there is inadequate understanding among members of the public about the contents of the basic law and the process by which it was drafted of the means that the authorities will use to deepen the understanding of the public, particularly the youth, in this regard, including the understanding that the one country and the two systems in the one country, two system concept are equally important and free. As the chief executive said last month that all people in Hong Kong, especially politicians and young people, need to gain a comprehensive understanding of the country's development from different perspectives, both for the good of the country and for their own careers, and that the government was ready to facilitate communication between all sectors of Hong Kong and the central authorities, as well as local governments of various provinces and municipalities on the mainland, of the government's plans to facilitate such communication so as to enhance the understanding of the motherland among all sectors in Hong Kong. Secretary for Constitution and Mainland Affairs, Mr. Albert Chen. Members, please, uh, I, I request a quorum call to bring back the radical members to the chamber.
Xin chào các nội địa Secretary for Constitution and Mainland Affairs. Mr. President, our reply to Mr. Wong Ting Kwong's question after consulting the Education Bureau EDB and Home Affairs Bureau HAB is as follows. 1 and 2. The basic law of the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of the People's Republic of China, the basic law, is the constitutional document for the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region, HKSAR. In accordance with the Constitution of the People's Republic of China, the National People's Congress enacted the basic law prescribing the systems to be practiced in the Hong Kong SAR in order to ensure the implementation of the basic policies of the People's Republic. Republic of China regarding Hong Kong, that is one country, two systems, Hong Kong people administering Hong Kong in a high degree of autonomy. The basic law was promulgated on the 4th of April 1990 and formally implemented on the 1st of July 1997. Over the years, the Hong Kong ICR government has been actively conducting basic law promotion and education through various approaches and channels in an easily understandable manner. The Hong Kong ICR government established in January 1998 a basic law promulgate promotion steering committee, the BLPSC, comprising both official and non-official members and chaired by the Chief Secretary for Administration. The BLPSC provides the necessary steer on the overall strategy and key aspects of promoting the basic law and coordinates the efforts of government departments and various stakeholders in the community as well as community organizations in taking forward basic law promotion activities. Five working groups have been set up under the BLPSC, namely the Working Group on Local Community, the Working Group on Teachers and Students, the Working Group on Civil Servants, on Industrial, Commercial and Professional Sectors, and on of Overseas Community. The five working groups discuss and suggest detailed proposals for the five specific sectors. The Hong Kong SAR government also conducts territory-wide promotion activities for the general public, including the use of electronic media such as announcements in the public interest on television and t radio, internet and mobile applications, organizing ex exhibitions, example roving ex exhibitions in shopping malls and a mobile resource center, and co organizing large-scale activities with community organizations, examiner, example seminars, talks and debate competitions. The Hong Kong ICL government will evaluate in an appropriate manner the understanding of the basic law by the public and the effectiveness of the various promotion activities. For example, we will record the hit rate of the basic law website and the number of downloads of the mobile application. Regarding promotion activities held at the district level, such as roofing exhibitions and the Roof Mobile Resource Center, we will record the public's participation rate and responses. We will also collect feedback from teachers and students on the effectiveness of the Mobile Resource Center promotion in school visits and review the reports on such activities. At the same time, our colleagues will conduct on-site observations and check on the activities and prepare reports to evaluate the effectiveness of the various community activities under the Basic Law Promotion Sponsorship Scheme. The Hong Kong is our trust the government trusts that the public has attained a basic understanding of the basic law through different channels and various types of promotional activities. The year 2015 marks the 25th anniversary of the promulgation of basic law, apart from continuing to foster public understanding of the base main content of basic law by making use of topics from daily lives, the Hong Kong SLG has also organized large-scale activities, including a seminar and a thematic exhibition, so that public can have an in-depth understanding of one country, two systems, and the basic law. Moreover, individual bureau departments have also organized activities for their target groups. For example, the EDB has produced basic law visual learning packages for upper second primary and junior secondary students and organized territory-wide inter-school quiz competitions. The Civil Service Bureau has organized talks on basic law, trade and industry departments organized thematic seminars and souvenir design competition and so on. The community participation came 2015 and 16 and the cooperation scheme with District Council 2015-16 to 16 organized by the Committee on the Promotion of Civic Education under HAB, as well as the Basic Law Promotion Sponsorship Scheme under the Constitution and Mainland Affairs Bureau, have also encouraged community organizations to stage activities at the district level to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the promulgation of Basic Law. The ADB has also subsidized education groups and tertiary institutions to carry out Basic Law Promotion activities through the Quality Education Fund and the Basic Law Promotion Funding Scheme for tertiary institutions. With regard to the radical forces mentioned by Mr. Wong in his question, I would like to reiterate two points. Firstly, Hong Kong is a place governed by the rule of law. Any person who wishes to express his views differently, <coughs> irrespective of his age or background, must abide by the law. In fact, uh, Article 42 under Chapter 3 of the Basic Law, which is about fundamental rights and duties of the student residents, states clearly that Hong Kong residents and other persons in Hong Kong shall have the obligation to abide by the laws enforced in Hong Kong. Secondly, the majority of Hong Kong citizens attach great importance to rational communication and inclusiveness, and they do not welcome radical behaviors in Hong Kong. Three, 
According to the information provided by the EDB, the Bureau has all along, all along been organizing mainland exchange programs to complement students' learning. It continues to adopt a variety of strategies and increases the annual quota to subsidize students to join mainland exchange programs. It will also continue to organize mainland exchange programs of various themes with visits to different provinces to enable students to have a deeper understanding of our country's development in terms of history, culture, economics, technology, infrastructure, etc. through first and experience. According to the information provided by the HAB, the Bureau and the Commission on youth, COY, have been subsidizing mainland exchange activities organized by community groups and NGOs. The HAB and COY have launched the funding scheme for youth internship in the mainland since uh, 2014 to subsidize mainland internship programs for youngsters organized by community organizations. Through these programs, youngsters will experience firsthand the actual situation working in the mainland, enhancing their understanding of the job market and develop opportunities in the mainland and acquire work experience, which gives them the competitive edge in job hunting. The HAB organizes the service corps co co program, which provides opportunities for Hong Kong youngsters to engage in voluntary service in underprivileged areas in the mainland for six months or longer. This year, the HAB has launched a new program called the Guangdong Hong Kong Youth Volunteer Service Program, which allows Hong Kong and Guangdong tertiary students to participate, participate in voluntary services together in villages and towns and enhance exchanges and mutual understanding. The HASAL government will continue to promote the basic law through various approaches and channels, and we are also willing to listen to the views and proposals of members in this respect. Thank you. Mr. Wang Ting Kuang. Thank you, President. In the main reply, the uh, SAR government said that there are various departments and bureau would make arrangements for young people to attend exchange activities with the mainland. But I believe there is not a proper structure, and also the time frame is usually short. Some time ago, the DAB proposed that in Guangdong, we should set up a Hong Kong youth training center for young people to learn about the mainland. So would the Hong Kong Shell government actively pursue this proposal with the mainland authorities? This will allow young people in Hong Kong to attend exchange activities with the mainland and this, the scale could be um, bigger and there would be a better structure too. Secretary, President, I have not yet had a chance to study the proposal of the DAB in detail. Perhaps the relevant bureau has uh, received your proposal. Uh, on Guangdong Hong Kong cooperation on our, and on our bilateral relations with the mainland, a different role play, different bureau play different roles. I'm more than happy to discuss the DAB's proposal together with other colleagues in other bureau. I think uh, when it comes to um, considering the proposal in specific terms, and we have to look at the nature of the training program, the content of it, and uh, which are the target groups of young people. We have to look at the duration of the training programs as well, because we also have to bear in mind the school calendar. So, on this details I mentioned, uh, when if um, they are all sorted out properly, then I and the Reverend Bureau would be more than happy to raise this with the Guangdong authorities, because there is already a cooperation framework between Hong Kong and Guangdong, and then so we could raise it in that forum. Mr. Martin Liao, President, in, uh, the, on the promotion of basic law, the Secretary said that they would uh, um, go pay visits to observe um, activities and also compile reports so they could evaluate the effectiveness of the various promotion activities. Now, in your evaluation, since uh, 1997, that is since the reunification, in promoting basic law, what is your evaluation of the effectiveness of these activities? Uh, there are four uh, um, classes. One that is um, very effective, um, Mm, relatively effective, mm, mm, just uh, effective or un not effective. Secretary, uh, quorum call please, President. Members, remember to read the basic law. Is there provision on quorum?
Mr. Martin Liu, can you please repeat the last part of your question? President, of course, members have the right to make a quorum call, but members also have the duty to put questions to the government. So I hope members will respect um, um, a member when he's asking questions. Please don't interrupt him halfway. Let him finish his question first. Now, since 1997, uh, the effectiveness of um, basic law promotion activities, I'm giving you four um, ranks. Do you think the um, activities have been very effective or um, effective or just barely effective or not effective? So four cat ranks. Secretary, thank you, Mr. Liao. Well, if you ask me to uh, pick one of the four, maybe that is not um, proper assessment of uh, our promotional work in the past decade or so. Allow me to say this. As we organize um, for, for the uh, basic law promotion activities, we organized a participation. The participation rate was quite good from April to May this year. The uh, Our bureau and the Leisure and Cultural Services Department, together with the Basic Law Promotion Steering Committee, um, staged an exhibition on the 25th anniversary of the publication of the law. The uh, exhibition showed the uh, drafting process and uh, various other pictures and items of historic value. 83,000 people came to the exhibition that included 69 schools, over 5,700 primary and secondary school students visited uh, the exhibition. That's an example. As for other smaller scale promotion activities, our bureau and colleagues of the, of the relevant bureau may um, um, prepare questionnaires for the participants. We asked them whether the uh, activities helped their understanding of the basic law. Now, from the information collected on the whole, people believe that um, the various activities uh, helped their understanding of basic law. The percentage is about 80. And then we have various um, irregular survey polls. We uh, commissioned polling um, bodies to do the poll for us. Now, for those with some understanding or a good understanding of basic law, uh, we, are, we want to find out um, about this. The latest uh, survey found that uh, for those who have, have some understanding and now they have a better understanding, uh, this the percentage is 86. As for those with no understanding of the basic law, there's less than 20% of the uh, interviewees. So when it comes to the uh, strategy, in uh, promoting the basic law, we will uh, step up our strategy. We will also expand the scope of promotion. The Basic Law Promotion Steering Committee is chaired by the Chief Secretary for Administration. Now, this year is the 25th anniversary of the promulgation of the basic law, but the committee will also look at uh, future strategies and see what activities may be more effective. So the committee is now discussing these various ideas. I'm sure very soon the Reference Bureau will be coming with new um, approaches for the promotion. Now, of course, um, if I may say this too, in closing, um, the preamble, Chapter 9, Section 1, uh, Article 160 and the free annexes. Well, when we read uh, the basic law, especially this part, some may find that uh, rather dry. In the past decade or so, on uh, different uh, specific provisions of basic law, um, people came to know about them because of certain incidents. That's my observation. So that's because uh, there could be media reports, and so that's why people came to know about uh, certain articles. For example, over a decade ago, there was a discussion on Article 24, and then um, there was also a discussion on Article 23, and then with the free rungs of constitutional reform exercises, um, and people have come to understand more about the free annexes, uh, Articles 45, 68, and so on. Now, although the constitutional reform package was not endorsed by this council, but in the past year or two, from our observation, um, as when it comes to the basic law, especially um, um, the role, the constitutional role of the central authorities in the um, development of Hong Kong. Um, people have come to know more about it. So when there is a um, particular case, uh, actually it helps the public better understand the basic law. 
But of course, on certain provisions of basic law, maybe the understanding uh, is achieved through a rather painful process. As uh, Mr. Liao has pointed out recently, on Article 75 of the basic law, that is the uh, quorum of the uh, uh, basic uh, of, of the Legislative Council, not less than two thirds of members. I'm sure members know that very well. Even those are following these proceedings on TV, they would know uh, very well by now this article. Thank you, Miss Emily Lau. President, what um, Hong people, Hong Kong people. Um, no best is that the SL government and the central authorities have not uh, delivered on their pledges to grant Hong Kong people a high degree of autonomy, Hong Kong people administering Hong Kong. They've messed up uh, universal suffrage. They also kept interfering with um, Hong Kong affairs. That's why we saw uh, all these activities of people trying to uh, tear up the community, as mentioned by Mr. Wong Ting Kwong. Now, if the government keeps um, publicizing those issues, could it really help Hong Kong to deal with these uh, very uh, critical issues? Uh, even the president said, uh, asked whether the government has uh, reviewed the implementation of one country systems um, and see if there are any serious issues. Uh, ha have you ever told um, the central authorities that C.Y. Leung and his policies have uh, been tearing up Hong Kong apart, leading to all these uh, conflicts? Secretary, on many occasions when I re responded to members' questions, since the reunification, the uh, leaders of the central authorities, the Hong Kong SL government, have all along been strictly abiding by the basic law in um, in terms of one country, two systems, Hong Kong people administering Hong Kong in a high degree of autonomy, and they've been uh, strictly implementing the various provisions of the basic law. Now, in the community, we have a pluralistic community. Different people may have different views, young people may also have certain aspirations about uh, certain issues, and maybe there are certain grievances as a result. So I believe the way to resolve it, uh, today the discussion is about promoting base, the basic law, but if we want to address the different uh, views in the community or even um, disputes in the community, the best way is to look at the policy itself and see what are the long-term interests involved. I could give you an example, young people. Uh, in my years of uh, contact with them, one, I'm not saying all, but one of the concerns is about housing, buying their homes. And as you know, the uh, chief executive uh, uh, attaches great importance to housing and land supply issues. Personally, um, I'm glad to note that the Democratic Party uh, is willing to explore changing the land use for green belt zones so we could have more land for housing. Well, that's a positive development. So uh, if on policy issues there could be cross-party discussion, as in this example, I believe that would help to address the concerns of the community in a positive way. My question is whether there's any review on the policies of the central government which has led to um, the uh, tearing up of the community, and in that process, what has the SL government done? to deal with it. Secretary, on the basic uh, policies of uh, the uh, central authorities across Hong Kong, these are spelled out in the basic law. So these are the uh, fundamental policies. And the SL government's uh, duty is to um, implement these policies and policy objectives uh, in line with the basic law. Well, so there's a need to uh, resolve differences or strive for, strive for common ground. And uh, we've been trying to do that in the three rounds of constitutional reform exercises. Or some of the exercises were successful, some not so. But we've learned from this experience. And um, as I said in the main reply, uh, Hong Kong people embrace rational discussion and uh, inclusiveness as we implement um, the policy of one country, two systems. Mr. Christopher Chung. Now, the secretary seemed to be saying that he's happy with the F uh, uh, outcome of the effort in promoting basic law when he replied to Mr. Martin Leo's question. How come that recently so many people still raise the uh, uh, lion flag? How come they um, miss the uh, colonial rule so much? Uh, could the, the gap be widening, actually, in, in terms of uh, ideology? 
Now, the uh, secretary said that he's happy with the promotion efforts of the basic law, and how does he explain this phenomena then? Secretary, well, Mr. Chung, please note, I never said I was very happy with the outcome. I'm just, I uh, just shared with you some of the objective uh, statistics and data we collected. Now, I also said that in the light of new circumstances and new developments, the uh, committee chaired by the Chief Secretary for Administration will um, come up with uh, new strategies in promoting the basic law. Mr. Chung referred to a handful of people. About two months ago, uh, I told the media for such a behavior, my own observation is that uh, it's, um, it's just um, the conduct of a handful of people that definitely does not represent a mainstream view of the community. So we have to um, therefore make an objective assessment of the situation ourselves. Now for this handful of people, a minority of them, uh, and the way they behave, could that give the perception that um, such behavior is spreading? Well, that's something we could observe closely, but we have to look at the objective facts. Here we're talking about a, a my handful of people only. Uh, as I mentioned in the main reply, in Hong Kong people there, uh, in Hong Kong there are people with different uh, views and opinions, but what is important is that we all act in accordance with the law. And also I mentioned that uh, when it comes to Chapter 3 of the Basic Law, there's uh, obligations and duties of Hong Kong people. I think are an important article on our obligation that is Hong Kong residents and other people in Hong Kong shall abide by the laws of Hong Kong. It is their obligations. Perhaps in the past, uh, not many people paid attention to this article, but perhaps at this time, um, this uh, article becomes particularly relevant. That's the end of the uh, of oral questions. Fan on, so do. Yi Ling, yet. It was first reading.